Hello and welcome to our service for harvest time. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Our theme today is being thankful and our opening hymn, Come ye thankful people, come. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. 
Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy and in our song we will praise our God. The Collect. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Bible reading is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Our focus today is on thankfulness. And as our church family these days has links to many different parts of the world, I thought I'd begin by asking how many different languages you can say thank you in. A moment to think. If you go to a supermarket or a card shop, there's bound to be a selection of thank you cards, isn't there? And you might well choose a particular design to fit either the, with the person you're saying thank you to, or maybe what you're saying thank you for. Or, of course, you might not just settle for a card, but buy someone an actual bunch of flowers, or even an actual bunch of balloons to spell out your thank you. Last year, we saw a lot of thank you NHS rainbow posters and flags, especially when the hospitals were so full of people with covid and we were grateful for those who worked in the National Health Service. Saying thank you is important. And one key part of Harvest Sunday is to remind us of the many people involved in making sure we have enough food in front of us day by day. Not just the farmers that plough and plant and harvest, but many others, including truck drivers. The last few weeks have highlighted how important what they do is. Shop workers, those who cook our food, and there's someone else that it's even more important that we say thank you to. God. Psalm 100 begins, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And it then commands us, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. His gates are the gates of the Old Testament temple compound. When people in Old Testament times were invited to come to gather together for a variety of reason, reasons, they came to offer sacrifices, to worship, to pray, and to give thanks to God. They thank God for his deliverance in times gone by, for his steadfast love and faithfulness to all generations, as the psalm writer puts it. And one obvious demonstration of God's love and faithfulness was his provision of their needs through the harvest year by year. All three major festivals in Old Testament times when God's people were to come to the temple in Jerusalem were linked in some way to the harvest. Though there were other very important things they were commemorating too, the Passover was the first, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Shovat, Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, when they celebrated the first fruits of the harvest. And then Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, which took place at the completion of the harvest. Other religions around the world, though they may have very different ideas about God, often have something very similar to a harvest festival when they give thanks for all that is provided for their needs. 
The Americans actually called their equivalent of Harvest Festival Thanksgiving. The year I spent in the States, I was a bit surprised, first of all, that it didn't happen till nearly the end of November, and also that Turkey was centre stage on that day, more even than Christmas. But on the 25th of November, they will be doing essentially the same thing as we're doing today, saying thank you that our needs are provided for day by day, year by year, both to other people who are involved in the process and especially to God. There are other ways of expressing our thanks to God for all he provides too, saying a thank you prayer, a grace before our meals. As I was preparing this talk, I found an article about the possible value of doing that even in public. The, the author writes how he doesn't find it an easy thing to do and there's a cartoon accompanying uh, his piece with a, with a waiter deliberately drawn looking a little uneasy as a group say grace together in the restaurant. But the writer suggests it's a way of publicly giving a challenge to most people around us as assumption that it's just human cleverness and hard work that produces our meals. Many of us will have been saying thank you sometime in the last year when we were vaccinated. Of course, we thank those who worked so hard to develop the vaccines which have helped us to begin to get back to normal and those who work in the vaccine centres. But many will have wanted to say thank you to God too. And in church, Thanksgiving is a big part of the hymns and the songs that we sing week by week. For those who take part in Holy Communion, at its heart is thanksgiving. And not just for the small portions of bread and wine that we share together, but for what they symbolise. The body and blood of Jesus, given on the cross for our forgiveness, his dying that we might live. So the importance of saying thank you to others and to God, not just at harvest time, but especially at this time of year. We're going to finish with a, a video on that theme, after which Steve Forrester will lead us in prayer. Mm. This cereal is delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, folks. The 815 has been delayed. The 815 has been cancelled. Replacement bus services are available. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Come on, give me five. Amazing. Great driving.
Good morning, everyone. Good to be with you. Let's pray together, shall we? Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we bow before you in awe and wonder this morning. You are the creator of the world. You sustain everything by the power of your word. But your creation, beautiful and marvellous as it is, is but a pale reflection of your perfection and splendour. We offer you our praise and worship. You and you alone are worthy of this. Righteous and holy God, please accept our prayers and supplications. Let them be to you a fragrant sacrifice, fitting to one as wonderful as you. We come to you this morning to offer ourselves to you and to your service. Allow us, we pray, to be a part of what you're doing. If, though, Lord, we do this from our own selves, forgive us. For without your leading and guidance and equipping, all of our effort is vanity. Fill us with yourself, we pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and help us to allow him to abide within us. We remember that even Jesus said he could only, he could only do what he saw his Father doing and help us have this same confession. We are sorry for the wrong things we do or say or think. We're sorry for putting ourselves first. We're sorry for ignoring your word and your spirit and his prompting. We're sorry for being deaf to you and deaf to the needs of others. Grant us, we pray, a heart of flesh, not of stone. Grant us to have a willing and contrite spirit and empower us with the courage to walk with you in obedience. We pray for our church fellowship here in the Westlands. Bless Andrew and his family. Bless our lay readers and stewards. Bless Naomi and cause them all to prosper in the works you've given them to do. Bless us all with your Holy Spirit's power that as a fellowship we may reflect the love and purpose of Jesus here in this place and this time. Lord, glorify yourself and your Son and your Spirit through us here. Fill our lives with testimonies of encounters with the living God and help us lift the name of Jesus higher and higher. We pray for our neighbourhood and ask your blessing upon it. We pray for health and prosperity for those who live around us and we pray for safety and peace within the homes here. Father God, we know that you are always drawing the lost to you. So we pray for our community and ask you to open the blind eyes soften hardened hearts and unplug deaf ears. Grant us the means to receive those seeking you. Grant us the love and patience to disciple those that determine to follow you. And grant us the wisdom to continue sharpening those whose relationship with you is established and mature. For the church in our nation and for our nation, we pray your blessing. Help your church be above the crowd's noise. Help us be bright in the darkness. Help us be clean amongst the dirt, strong on behalf of the weak, courageous for the fearful, and full of faith in the face of doubt. We're to be salt and light, a city set on a hilltop, a light on a stand. Reforge us for this purpose, we pray. Restore integrity, truth, and righteousness amongst your people, and let godliness once more be properly understood in this land. Lord Jesus, until you return and make all things new, we continue to pray for our world. Let us live in peace and bless the nations and their peoples. We know of wars and famines and natural disasters, and for those suffering in these things we pray your blessing. Bring your healing to them, we pray. Bring your restoration to them, we pray, and grant them peace. Lord Jesus, until you return, we will trust in your promises. And when you return, let us be ready. Let us be servants who are not surprised at their master's return. Let us be ready to show you the increase we've achieved from the talents you've entrusted to us. And so we say, come soon, Lord Jesus. All these prayers we pray in and through the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing together. Let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord, for he is kind. Let us with a glass of light praise the Lord for his kind, for his mercy. the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon us, his children, that we may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all people. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and those we care for today and evermore. Amen.